So good to see you all here. Brother Angel, Brother Joe, thank you so much. Boy, since the, around the second song or so, I've been just getting like uh, an unction, an anointing in my spirit for something from God. And it really has to do with the, the title of my message is what I've been feeling the whole service. And the title of this word is A Cry for Renewal. Everybody say, A Cry for Renewal. God, we need renewal. God, we need to be refreshed. God, we need more of you in our life. How many of you are hungry for God today? You know what? God doesn't fill you if you're not hungry. Come on now. Imagine somebody inviting you over to a beautiful dinner. They spent the days preparing. Four-course meal, all the beautiful, uh, you know, different entrees and desserts and everything. And you say to your family, you know what? Let's stop at McDonald's on the way over. I'm like, what? Why would you want to eat at McDonald's when God has prepared a gourmet meal for you? Hallelujah. He satisfies the longing heart. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul longs for you, God. How many of you are longing for God? That's what I want to talk about this morning. And so, Father, help us with this message, Lord. Anoint us for your service. And let every heart, every, as Pastor Angela said, every eye be open spiritually, every ear be open, let every, every heart be open spiritually to receive what you want to say and do in our midst today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you be in agreement with me this morning? Well, if you were here on New Year's Eve, you heard Pastor Angela talk about the story of Elijah, a very interesting episode in Elijah's life. After his tremendous victory at Mount, on Mount, Mount Carmel uh, and the defeat of the false prophets of Baal, uh, Elijah was really at, you could say, the pinnacle of his success. I mean, what a tremendous victory, for, not only for himself, but also for the nation of Israel. And his prayer was that, you know, God who answers by fire would not only show that he's God, but if you read the story very carefully, and he says, Lord, that you are also turning our hearts back to you. It wasn't just the fire that Elijah was so, you know, focused on and who's the strongest, who's got the mo most power. But he's saying, show, show us, Lord, that you have come to turn our hearts away from idolatry and back towards you. That's what he was really after. But anyway, as the story goes, Jezebel was not happy. The wicked queen, King Ahab, they were not too happy, and she threatened Elijah's life. And she let it be known, she says. He's going to be like, well, he's going to be a dead man. By tomorrow, this time tomorrow, I'm going to take his life. And here this mighty man of prayer, power, who could pray for drought, could also pray for rain, was afraid, and he ran for his life. And he ran and ran and ran, and he became exhausted and so depressed that he was actually suicidal. He said, Lord, take my life. My life doesn't mean anything anymore. I, I, I've, I'm just empty, Lord. I'm dry. I'm, I'm depleted, Lord. Have you ever felt depleted? Like you've poured it all out and there's no more you can pour out. He was at the end of his rope. And God had a little uh, experience with Elijah that renewed his life. He, uh, first, he fed him and he took care of his physical needs. He fed him twice. He gave him two different meals. He said, the journey's a long journey. You're going to need to eat twice. <laughs> I eat twice sometimes without a long journey. Hallelujah. And then he goes all the way with that food, that nourishment that the angels ministered to him. He goes all the way to the mountain of God. He goes to Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai, the same place where Moses received the Ten Commandments, where Moses made the covenant between God and the people. Elijah went all the way back to that holy mountain because he had to do business with God. God, if you're the real God and you're the one who destroyed the prophets of Baal, and you're the one who showed up with fire. I have no doubt that you fed me with the ravens, but why do I feel so depleted? Why do I feel so worn out? Why do I feel so dry inside, so empty? He needed to be refreshed. Somebody say amen. He needed to be renewed in the spirit. 
And God saw to it that he was. And he appeared to him, and he spoke to him in a powerful voice, even though it was a soft whisper. It shook Elijah to the core. He says, I'm not done with you yet, Elijah. Somebody say, I'm, God's not done with me yet. I got more work for you to do. I want you to go anoint Hazael, king over Syria, and I want you to uh, anoint Jehu, who is going to destroy the wicked house of Ahab. Jehu was a man who was full of the passion and zeal of God to destroy all the wicked prophets in the house of Jezebel. And then he said, I'm going to appoint you an assistant. I'm going to send a man named Elisha to come and help you. I want you to appoint Elisha to be your assistant. That's pretty cool to be an assistant prophet. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The point of it is that there's times when we feel like we're so depleted because our soul is weary. It's because we live in this human body. But we've got to understand it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. We've got to keep having eyes of faith. We've got to have times of refreshing in the presence of God. We've got to be renewed, otherwise we will run out of gas. You know, Jesus made sure that his disciples were equipped for their journey. Uh, first of all, he empowered them with his own authority. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, we read, Jesus called his 12 disciples to, them, to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. So first of all, he gave them authority. Somebody say, he gave them authority. Later on, he tells them, this is not in the, in the, on the screen, but later on he tells them, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Somebody say, amen. And nothing shall by any means harm you. So we have authority delegated to us from God. That's a good thing. And then he also gives them instructions on what to do and what not to do. In uh, Matthew 10, 7 and 8, he says, As you go, Matthew 10, 7 and 8, As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely have received, freely receive. Uh, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. And then he also made sure that they had times of debriefing where he could sort of, you know, reflect and go over what they were learning and tweak anything that was not correct. He wanted to make sure they got it right. So in Luke 10, verses 17 to 20, he says, it says, when the 72 disciples returned for one of their missions, they joyfully reported, everybody say reported, they reported to him what was going on. They kept this connection with Jesus Christ in their ministry. They weren't doing the ministry in their own power. They weren't doing the ministry in their own authority. They were accountable to Jesus Christ, and they wanted to keep going back to Jesus. There's an important reason I'm saying this. Because anything that you are doing for God has to be done with his power, has to be done with his authority, and with his instructions, obedience to his instructions. So Jesus uh, says to them, yes, you are rejoicing because I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But here's the lesson he wanted them to learn. Don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are recorded in heaven. Don't get all caught up on a power trip like, wow, I can cast out demons. Wow, that person was raised from the dead. The greatest miracle of all is that your sins were forgiven and your name is registered in heaven. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. That's the greatest miracle. And then he also called them aside for private times of rest and reflection. This is all leading somewhere. Somebody say, stick with the pastor right now. Stick with the pastor. Keep your mind focused, all right? I'm going somewhere. Mark chapter 6, 30 to 32. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told them all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said to them, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest for a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. 
So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. You see, Jesus understands the emotional, physical limitations we have. And again, as Pastor Angela said uh, about Elijah on on, uh, Thursday night, he was a man of like passions. What does that mean? He was a human being like us. And we all become weary, even the best preachers, even the greatest apostles, the greatest bishop, the greatest missionaries. They've all struggled sometimes with weariness, with sickness, with depression, with feeling like I don't have any more sermons. I don't have anything else to give. But that's why we need to connect with Jesus. That's why we need to keep tuning in to Jesus. That's why we need to stay in the vine where Jesus said, unless you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can do nothing. No, no branch can bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. And there are things that are going to pop up that are going to take supernatural uh, insight and supernatural wisdom to figure out and when it comes to 2021 i've been struggling and praying myself and saying god what are you saying to the church what is it lord that you want to do and i really believe with all my heart god has spoken to me and i want you to hear this word this morning i believe there are creative ideas coming there are going to be different methods in 2021 there are going to be new horizons somebody get excited Networks, ministry partnerships, and strategies that God alone will make prosper with our cooperation. God is the one who will give us success as long as we follow him, as long as we stay plugged in. This is the point of the message this morning. If you want renewal in your life, you want success in your ministry, it's because you are staying close to God. No branch can bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. The the connection point between a branch and the trunk of a tree is a very interesting, it's a union. There's a union between our spirit and his spirit. And uh, things like the establishment of the first deacons, for example. The Bible says that the widows were complaining because they were being overlooked. There were certain uh, Grecian widows in the church body that were being overlooked in the distribution. There was an overwhelming problem because in at pentecost there were thousands of visitors to jerusalem and many of these people who got saved and baptized in the holy spirit on pentecost now stayed in jerusalem and they had to have lodging and they had to have clothes and they had to have food and the church was just exploding and growing and when the church is growing and full of vitality and life it creates problems good problems somebody say good problems they were having what you would call a blessing crisis And many of you know that, like, God is blessing you so much, I don't know what to do with all these blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. So they waited on God. They prayed, and the Holy Spirit spoke to them about what to do. They appointed deacons. You know, Stephen and Philip and some of these others, and most of them were were Greeks because it was the Greeks who were complaining So they appointed Greek deacons to make sure it wasn't any kind of prejudice going on. Somebody say amen. How many of you know God's pretty smart? You know, Jesus has a way of renewing us so we don't have to die on the vine. God wants you to be refreshed. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Say it with me. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. I have a new car, and this new car that we have outside, the Tucson, has this thing that's really amazing. I'm amazed by all the computers and gadgets. How many of you like computers and gadgets? This, it's, it's amazing. So when you first turn it on, it tells you there's a, a screen on the dashboard that says, Systems Check. It's doing a systems check. It's telling you about all the different systems on the car, the tire pressure, the oil, the windshield, washer fluid, everything. It tells you everything about the car that's going on. So if if you need to have some air in the tire, you don't drive off down the road and end up on the side of the road because your air's got no more air. I mean, your tire's got no more air in it. A systems check. 
And I want to say to you this morning that the Holy Spirit wants to give you a systems check every day. Maybe you're lacking in joy. Maybe you're lacking because your uh, faith is not growing because you haven't been spending time in the Word. Somebody say amen. God wants to do a systems check so that we can see the condition of our body, our soul, and our spirit. Because God doesn't want us to burn out. And so this morning, let's take a moment to examine the condition of of our heart, mind, and vision, because there is a mission before us, not only in 2021, but beyond 21. Somebody say with me, there's great things for God to be done. There's things that God wants to get done. You see, the idea with Elijah was God saying to him, your mission is not over. And I believe the Lord's word for this first Sunday of 21, to Catalyst, and I waited for God and prayed about this, is that your mission is really on the cusp of, cusp of something very exciting and very different. Somebody say amen. As we were worshiping, I felt a shift in the heavens, Brother Joel. I felt something shift in the heavens. Like the prophecy, you know, the moment, the destiny was happening. And I'm telling you this morning, I hope you're paying attention. Because God is saying, I don't want the clutter I don't want the distractions. I don't want the weariness. I don't want the competing interests in your life to stop what I am about to do and what I want to do in you and through you. Somebody say amen. You see, if you don't get renewed, you're going to fall back into old habits. If you don't spend time in the Word and if you don't spend time allowing the Holy Spirit to shine His spotlight into your life, you're going to get old and crusty. Come on now. How many of you will still love Pastor Dave? Thank you, all two of you. Thank you very much. Old habits want to come back. Because the, 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 the level of anointing and the level of our intimacy with God becomes weaker. And, and, and it becomes drained. We get drained. We get drained. The best preachers, the best Christians get drained. We get tired. But God has made provision for this. Are you with me this morning? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God has an unending supply of resources for those who look to him. God, I'm dry, but you can fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, my, my spouse is driving me crazy, so I need more love. God, these kids and these grandkids are driving me crazy. I need more physical strength. My boss is picking on me. God, I need more forgiveness. God, I don't have any vision for the future. Lord, refresh my vision. Give me a new vision. Give me a fresh vision, Lord. The way you visited Elijah. Lord, visit me, O oh God. Hallelujah. God is looking for a glorious church. A church that is alive, full of the abundant life of Christ. Old habits want to fight against, to mitigate against the freshness of what God wants to do. We end up becoming fault finding and we mull over the, you know, the misery of our life like the people in the wilderness. We should have gone back to Egypt. Why is our life like this? I'm tired of the manna, Lord. I'm just tired of the hot desert and all these things, God. Weariness. And those people did not enter the promised land. But Joshua and Caleb had a different attitude. Somebody say attitude. All right. Are you having a hard time discerning God's voice? Get renewed in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, the best way to focus this this morning and to remember this message is to take a look at the early church. Yes. Remember the book of Acts. Read the book of Acts. I'm in it right now. I'm in the middle of the book of Acts right now. When you study the life of the first church, you see a powerful pattern of people who are hungry for the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. 
and also people who are willing to go out on a limb for God. Three things. Hunger for the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and radical obedience. That's what they had. Acts chapter 6 says, So the Word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. And then in Berea, where Paul and his traveling team went, it says they were hungry to learn in Berea, Acts 17, and eagerly received the word of God. Every day they opened the scrolls of the scriptures to search and examine them, to verify that what Paul taught them was true. No wonder Paul had this energy that he was able to write, what is it, 19 books of the, of the New Testament or something like that? Or half of the New Testament? And travel on foot? Most of the time, on foot, to half the known world of that time? Where did he get that energy? He spent time with the Word of God, and he was time to wait on the Holy Spirit for the renewal that comes for those who are thirsty, for those who are hungry, to those who are spent. Hallelujah. The word Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God uh, is mentioned at least 65 times in the book of Acts alone. 65 times the Holy Spirit said, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and us. The Spirit said, separate Paul and Barnabas unto the work for which I have called them. We wanted to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit said, no, you're going to go this way to Macedonia. It was a Spirit-filled church consisting of Spirit-filled people. So the question that, you know, for all of us, the obvious question is, how filled am I with the Holy Spirit? And the nice thing about this is that God gives you more if you ask Him. God will refresh us. I've been there myself. I felt it this morning as I was worshiping. I felt my level going up. <laughs> like somebody was putting gas in my, in my car. Yes. How many of you know what I'm talking about this morning? Amen. Amen. 65 times. And then even under persecution, there was a desire for the presence and power of God, even under the threat of persecution. When they were told not to preach anymore, and they were told, how did you do this miracle? And they were threatened, they were put in jail, they were, they were whipped. They went back to the community, the church community, and they said, God, you see their threats, but give us more miracles. I was like, whoa, these guys were, were hardcore. <laughs> like they would say up in the Bronx, they were hardcore. <laughs> they were sold out to God. Yeah, they just come out of jail. They just had been beaten and shamed. And they came back rejoicing that they were allowed to experience shame for reproach for the name of Christ. And then it says, when they prayed, they said, Lord, stretch forth your hand to do more signs and wonders and miracles. And after they had prayed in that way, here's exactly what the Bible says. The place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled, and you could say refilled. Everybody say refilled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit defined the life of the early church, and it needs to define our life as well. Can you say amen? amen. The Holy Spirit was outpoured, acknowledged, and revered in da the daily discourse of their lives. It was a prominent feature in the church. What is the Holy Spirit doing? What is the Holy Spirit saying? Where is he bringing conviction to our hearts? Where might we be resisting the Holy Spirit? Like Stephen said to the Jewish believers who are about to stone him. He gives them this whole history of the, the, the Jewish people. And at the end, he comes to this conclusion. You have always resisted the Holy Spirit. He said, that's why you've missed this. Wow, wow, this is so important, Gloria. This is so important. I don't want to be in a place where I am shutting my mind to the Holy Spirit, where I'm hardening my heart, where I'm dictating to God, God, you can only come this far and no more. 
That means you're the Lord, that he's not the Lord. If you're telling him what to do, then he's not the Lord. And so this is what was so significant about the early church. These were people who were sold out to God. And I want to just conclude with this this morning. As we begin this new year, nothing could be more fitting than a reminder for us to ask God to reset and renew our hunger for the Word and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you haven't been reading your Bible, get back in the Word. Spend time in the Psalms. Spend time uh, wherever God leads you. Read the book of Acts. Read the Gospels. But read it with the idea of learning and digesting. The Word is the bread of life. It's the Word of life. Amen? Amen? Let's invite Him to refresh us. Because I want to tell you this morning with all of my heart, there is an important mission that we are about to embark on. And I sense some things coming. I can't share everything with you this morning. But I sense some things, and I'm praying. My wife and I are fasting and praying for confirmation about the things that God is about to do with this church. We are at a crossroads. This building is not going to hold up much longer. Somebody say amen. amen. And thank God for how hard you all have worked to keep this building safe and sound. And those of you who have contributed and been faithful, God bless you. I would love to see when we have the groundbreaking, I would love to see those who have been with the church for 20 years or so all out there with shovels, uh, all of them breaking ground together. Wouldn't that be cool? Because you have worked. You have been faithful. Somebody say amen. 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 But right now we're at a crossroads. We're not going to get to the future by doing just the things we did in the past. If you want God's preferred future, you better do some hearing. You better do some hungering. You better do some uh, intimacy with God. You got to get close to him. No branch can bear fruit of itself unless it remains in the vine. Whoever has Christ in his heart is one with him in spirit. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to renew us, refresh us, and give us a fresh vision of his mission for our life. Beware of spiritual atrophy. Unfortunately, during this pandemic, it has been a real crucible for the body of Christ. The church has been somewhat isolated and scattered. It's difficult. It's been difficult for pastors. Talk to any pastor, they'll tell you. It's been difficult for, for people who've had to miss services because they love being in this atmosphere that we had this morning, beautiful atmosphere of the, the presence of God and the worship that we do. But unfortunately, the worst part about that is that, as my son-in-law said a few weeks ago, he said, the more you miss church, the less you'll miss church. Think about that for a minute. The more people miss church, the less they'll miss church. Some, some, not all. Thank God, not you. And those of you who are watching, but we are in a very, very serious time, a crossroads. And I am calling the church to attention. Somebody say amen. amen. As your pastor, I am calling all of us to be hungry and thirsty for God and for his Holy Spirit, to be renewed in our spirit. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is gone. But God is a present help in the time of trouble. He's right here with you today. He can be your present helper and your future hope. Hallelujah! We need to give God a praise right now. Let's give God some praise. He wants to be your present helper and your future hope. So here's what it says in Ephesians 4, 22 and 24. Throw off the old way of thinking, your old sinful nature and your former way of... Throw it off! Amen! It's an old garment. It's corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, everybody say, instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. For the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Say amen, church. 
The word and the spirit, and the last part, of course, let me talk about this more next week, is the community. The new family. I love what it says in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. I remember Brother uh, Stephan preaching about this one time on a Wednesday night. I'll never forget it. This is one of the secrets of the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miracles and signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. This sounds like a community to me. This sounds like a new family. They worshiped together at the temple each day, and they met in their homes also for the Lord. So they shared meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This was a full of life, vibrant, dynamic, growing spiritual organism. Somebody say amen. It was full of life because it was operating on all cylinders. That's what we want. Amen. Pastor Angel should not be the only one that says that. Amen. It's not that I'm saying, you know, let's all do wacky, try to, you know, show off or be emotional. It's not what I'm saying. I just want to follow God. I want to follow God where he's going. I have no interest in being one of these guys that, bless God, I'm going to hold on till the church goes down and fizzles out. No way, Jose. Hallelujah. Sorry, Jose. Where are you? He's not here today. All right. I, I don't want to be one of those guys. Oh, we got a Jose back there. Hi, Joseph. God bless you, Brother Joseph. I've met some. Well, bless God, you know, we've got five people left in the church, but we are the purest church there is in town. You know, I, and I'm not, this has nothing to do with COVID right now, okay? I'm not criticizing those who have had to stay home because you've had to because of logical reasons and health reasons. That's not what this is about. What I am preaching, I would have preached before COVID. If you want to understand what my heart is, I would have preached the same sermon, maybe even more so, before we went into COVID. But COVID just underscored the challenge that we have. It's a challenge to be a family. There's new paradigms. There's new creativity. God wants to do things in a different way. Maybe we need to be more online. Maybe we, ha- we need to have small group. Maybe we need to have home Bible studies. Hallelujah. Maybe we need to be out giving food to people. There are people who have lost their jobs and have no food to put on their table. We need to be a church that's involved in ministry outside of these walls. Somebody say amen. I'm sharing, I'm sharing some vision with you this morning. Sharing some vision. I want you to understand, Elijah, the the job's not done. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The greatest work before you is God's work. You can add a wing to your house. Hallelujah. You can paint the walls blue or red. Hallelujah. You could grow your hair longer or cut it off. Hallelujah. But nothing, there's nothing that will happen this coming year. That is more important than obeying the mission of God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I have a passion and a vision for a healthy church. That is my motto for 2021. A passion for a healthy church. That's my motto for 2021. I want us to be a church that's like a real family. You know, there were times in history, and I'm going to close here in just a second. There were times in history where the people went on great missions. They went to new worlds to discover new worlds. People came to America. They went to, you know, the far reaches of uh, Asia, and they discovered new places in South America and so on, the Amazon and whatnot. In some of those cases... The, the people were so committed to their mission that they, when they arrived at the new land, they burned the boats. They said, there's no, that's it, guys, we're going ahead. 
and and the captain or the leader of the mission just said, I ordered them to burn all the boats. Wow. Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. No turning back. No, this is the attitude of mine. Well, if it doesn't work out, I could always depend on the government. Oh, God, have mercy. If the church doesn't work out, you know, I could join the, the Rotary Club. What clubs do they have today? I don't know. That's probably pretty old. God doesn't want us to be a club. We are a family. A family, a real family in the truest sense, not a perfect family. Some of you are thinking, well, you know, I've been hurt. Uh, I, nobody understood me. Nobody prayed with me one time. I know we're far from perfect. But how many of you want to get there? How many of you want to get better? Hallelujah. You want to get better. Somebody say amen. Amen. Worship team, come on back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. A cry for renewal. Lord, we've been drained, but thank God you provide refillings. Lord, I feel empty, but you said you would fill those who are thirsty. You would satisfy the hungry. Come on, church. Somebody get excited with me here this morning. He satisfies the thirsting soul with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? God wants to renew somebody's youth like the eagle. Yes. Hallelujah. Renewal. Renewal. A cry for renewal. God, open my eyes. Take the cataracts away. Hallelujah. Lord, open my ears, O oh God. Refresh me. Say it with me. Refresh me, Lord. Refill me, Lord. Refocus me on the mission that is before me, Lord. There's important stuff for God to do. There's some important things for Catalyst to do as a family. And we're not going to get it done if we're discouraged and all divided and all weak and weary. We've got to come back to the place where God first called us. Hallelujah. We've got to come back to the well where we first drank deeply of the water of life. Hallelujah. Come back to the well of God. Ask God to refresh you. Hallelujah. Ask God to refill you. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't want to go back to my old habits. I want to get into the promised land, O oh Lord. I want to have a Joshua and Caleb spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. We're going to sing it again. I want to ask you while your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to ask you an important question. How many of you will be honest enough? To say, Pastor Dave, I relate to what you said. There have been times where I have felt so drained. I need more of the Holy Spirit. I need more of the Word of God in my life. I'm asking God for renewal. Would you put your hand up right now? My hand is up. I need renewal of the Holy Spirit in my life. I need to be refilled. I need to be refreshed. I need new energy, God. I need the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. To dwell in me. Hallelujah. Exceedingly abundantly, above all I could ask or even imagine, according to his great power that is at work with him. How many of you need more of that power in your life? I have decided to follow Jesus. Make it a new commitment. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. 
the cross before me, the cross before the world behind me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. No, sir. Pastor Angela, come on up here for a second. Just stay with me, folks. Stay with me right now. Please, please, please. Please stay with me. And what I mean by that is it's not me so much, but stay tuned in to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I feel like there's a word for someone here today, a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit is revealing the, de the, the enemy has painted a picture that looks so real that you've almost bought into it. It looks so real, but it's actually a fake. It's actually a counterfeit. And the Lord says, my reality is what you need. You need to have your eyes and your mind open to the realities of the kingdom of God and the word of God and the precious uh, relationship that you need to have with the Holy Spirit. You see, God called us into a relationship. He didn't just call us to try to try hard to be a good person and hopefully you'll make it to heaven. He said, open your heart. Let me come into your heart. The kingdom of God starts in the hearts. Amen? It starts in our heart. So right now, I want you to shake off those things that have discouraged, those things that have loomed so large in your mind. And God's saying, don't let any idol, don't let any competing interest take your eyes off of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before we sing, Pastor Angel, do you have anything? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know Pastor David and I are really serious about this. We've been seeking God. We've been praying. And the Lord tells us, you know, not to just get a, a, a what do you call it, a, a, a slogan for the new year, but seek me. Seek me. We're desperate. We're desperate, and we want God to move. We want not only to have a building, we want to have a spirit-filled church. We want a spirit-filled center Amen. where God is moving. We want to be connected to our community. We want to reach out. We want to see you become ministers of the gospel, yes. filled with the Holy Spirit, that you no longer just need to be fed all the time, but you have to give. Amen. That's what we are believing. Yes. I believe this year will be monumental changes. I really do for the kingdom of God. Last year shook the physical world, but this year I believe the Holy Spirit's going to shake the world in the spirit. The things will be different. Things will be new. We're going to have to leave some things behind. Things that we've counted on before. Things that we look to for our significance. But God is going to empower us in a way that we've desired for so long. Hallelujah! 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 Let it be, Lord! Let it be, Lord! Hear the cry of our hearts! Lord, that it comes from deep within. Deep within. We want more of you. We want the Holy Spirit to lead us, Lord. We don't want to play church. We don't want to be religious. We want to be like that church in Acts that was filled with the Holy Spirit and went forth and saw things that were miraculous. We're believing it, Lord. The world needs it now more than ever. The world needs the kingdom of God more than ever, Lord. So we thank you that we take this word today and we believe you, Lord. Be, don't be surprised that a hunger is going to start to come in you. A hunger for the Holy Spirit. A hunger for things to be different. A hunger that's a dissatisfaction. Not a grumbling, not a negativity, but a dissatisfaction with the way your life is now. With the way God is going to work. 
we're going to see a, a hunger like we've never seen before. That's what we're praying for. We're desperate for it. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you are tuning in. Some of you still need to. And at the risk of, you know, at the risk of having you say, Pastor, you know, I need to go. Uh, I've, I've got to have lunch. I, I'm just going to ask you to stay with me another 60 seconds. And just open your heart, open your mind to whatever God, whatever God is wanting to say to you. That's the most important thing. Sermons, you know, Paul said the foolishness of preaching. You know, a pastor can get up and preach his head off, and sometimes you applaud, sometimes it, it seems like it may miss the target, you don't get it. But every one of us is responsible to understand that God called us for a reason. Paul said, nothing else matters but that I might get a hold of that purpose for which Christ got a hold of me. We need to come back to that. We need to come back to our first love. So take this whole world. Come on, Brother Joe, sing it one more time. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes to your will, Lord. That's a good song. I'll say yes. Where he leads me. Where, where he leads me. I will go. I will go. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Put your hand, if you need it, put your hand up. I'll say yes. I'll say yes to your will, Lord. I'll say yes where he leads me, where, where he leads me. I will go. he leads me I will go where, where he leads me I will go I'll say yes Lord I'll say yes hallelujah I'll, I'll say yes Lord I'll say Hallelujah. Where he leads me, I will go. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Hallelujah. Brother Andrew, would you come and give a benediction, whatever is on your heart? Thank you, Jesus. I believe strong in my heart that the Lord prepare all of us. For some of us, 2020 has been a year we feel like we want to throw in the towel. We feel like God is not there. But in those times, when we feel like God is not there, He is right there. He's always there. In fact, nothing happens without God permit that to happen. And if we look into the book of Job, we will see 
man that was upright, a man that was perfect in everything. God allowed the enemy to destroy his whole family and take away everything. But I'm so excited to bring to you this morning that when it's all like I always said, when it looked like it's a dark Friday, there is a bright Sunday on the way. Oh, doesn't he always come true? He is a God in the very present help of trouble. He showed up. So I came this morning to let you know, don't worry. Don't cry. Don't be in a place where you feel like a God is not going to come true for you and you don't know what is going to happen. But I came here to let you know that we are serving a good God. We are serving a God that is full of grace, full of compassion, full of love, that He will never leave you, that He will never forsake you. He's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, the leaders in this church, the congregation, all the visitors, mom, aunt, uncle, everyone that present here, young people. This year is going to be a bright year. So fret not yourself of evildoers. Soon they should be cut down like grass and burn. And we will have the victory and the Lord will give you the desire of your heart. May the Lord bless you this morning. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And as we go this morning, we ask you, Lord, to touch your people. To cover us under your precious blood. And bring us back so that we can celebrate and worship you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen. Glory, hallelujah, it's to 
our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. To our God. You see, He's my Savior. God, my Savior. He's my healer. God, my healer. He's my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, he is. Is, he, is he your savior? God, my savior. Is he your healer? God, my healer. Is he your deliverer? God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. 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 Every word. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. One accord. Every praise. 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 Let me hear you sing it a cappella. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise, 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 every